All right, as you know, my main job these days is to repurpose lithium batteries. Why do we do that? It's because we're very wasteful as a nation, right? And so sometimes there are, you know, whole warehouses full of batteries that are brand new. They never use, you know, unused batteries that for some reason they didn't end up being used for their intended purposes, right? And so now they sit in a warehouse and then they sell them to somebody else. In the past, we used to destroy all this stuff, just completely destroy it, send it to a recycler, they would crush it, and then they would like get all the raw materials out and then re reuse, throw some of them away and then reuse some of them, right? But we were very, very wasteful even in that uh, scenario because uh, a lot of the stuff which is good landfill but now these days all the resources are very very valuable and so now they're starting to recycle a lot of the stuff but that even that is very wasteful if you have a battery that hasn't been used right it's got zero cycles it's got a bunch of life in there the most wasteful thing you do is destroy it like why destroy it just use it for another purpose and so finding another purpose for that one battery that was designed for something well, it takes a little bit of work and ingenuity a lot of times, right? And so people, sometimes they don't want to do that. That's, I made a, a, a niche career doing that. I've been doing this almost now for almost 10 years, right? And so that's what we do here. And in the search to do that efficiently and better, then recently I've, dis, I've uh, started learning how to design PCB boards, printed circuit boards, right? And so today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about that in what we're doing here. Here's a really good example of one of these batteries that was discarded uh, before it ended up being used at all. These are brand new. I mean, they're not new, they're a few, I guess brand new means like they're, they're recently made or whatever. These I think are a couple years old. Uh, they were made for a purpose, I think for like a robot somewhere like an Amazon or something. And for some reason they didn't end up being used. And so we have a full palette of these. They have all these cells that have zero cycles in them. They're a, a few years old. So there's some degra shelf degradation in there, but it's very minimal, right? And so I tested one of these ones and it gave me a hundred percent capacity of what it used to be, right? So now we have to find uh, uh, another purpose. We have to repurpose this battery pack because this is a very well high quality pack. It's using some really high quality and expensive battery cells and it's already engineered into a pack that it just kind of works. The voltage is a little bit weird, 30, 10S, which is 36 volts. There's not a ton of applications for that, but there's uh, plenty of them. Like, you know, golf carts, uh, forklifts, there's some e-bikes, there's all kinds of, there's a few applications that you can use. And so, uh, destroying it is definitely the worst thing you could do. Reusing it is the best thing that you can do. So in order to reuse it, you have to use what it's commonly known as a BMS. A BMS is a battery management system. And that is to keep these batteries safe because these, well, they, they can be dangerous if you misuse them or you mistreat them. And so they design a little computer that keeps the cells uh, happy, right? Any, if they fall, you know, above or below a certain voltage or temperature or whatever, then there's like a little switch in here that steps in and disconnects the battery so that it doesn't, you don't get into trouble, right? And so this is the BMS. The problem with this BMS is that even those high, very high quality and very well designed, what is proper is proprietary, which means that it was designed and manufactured for a very specific use right to be used in that one robot that this battery was intended to be used and in order to use it for any other purpose then you have to go in there and reprogram and rechange and redo stuff right which is like a high level skill you need to know a lot about like you know coding and then you have to know a lot about programming and other stuff skills that i you know I'm, i don't have I'm really good at other stuff, but like that one thing, you know, coding and, and uh, programming, not really my forte, right? And so what we have to do here is we have to replace this BMS. Yes, you could somehow, someone with the right skill set, they could reprogram this BMS to be used for another purpose. I don't, and so I'm left to having to just change it, right? And so what we're doing here is we're just using a bunch of these off the shelf 
BMSs. These can be found cheaply. Now there's a whole marketplace of these BMSs that are off the shelf. They're old, they're like, you know, they're not proprietary. They'll work with any battery as long as you follow a very simple set of instructions and wiring schematics and stuff, right? And so that's what we're doing here. We're using off the shelf things and that what we're doing is we made a custom PCB, right? A printed circuit board that will fit in the original place of the original BMS. So you can literally just take screws, unscrew this one out, and then with those same screws, screw this one in, and now you have a BMS that will work, that will make this battery useful for your whatever application you wanna use, right? There is no locking mechanism, there's no like, you know, there's nothing that prevents you from using this battery, right? And, and it'll still be safe because these have the same safety measures, right? It'll, it'll check the voltage of each cell. It'll check the temperature of the battery pack. It has some, some thermistors in there and stuff. Uh, and so it will keep the battery safe within certain, you know, degree or whatever. So that's what we're doing. In order to do that, I had to learn to make PCBs because all these batteries have the same thing. And, you know, just by knowing how to build your own and design your own custom printed circuit board, then it, you can fix that, right? And so this is what we've been doing now for a while, and this is version one, but as you can see here, this one has a lot of wires. Each one of these batteries, 10, there's 10 groups of batteries, and it, it requires one of these wires, right? But because we have four BMSs here, instead of using one big one, it's cheaper to use uh, a bunch of little ones, right? And they just parallel them, and so, we're, we're doing that and but in order to do that then you need four sets of these wires which is it becomes you know like a lot of wires to deal with and then you have to solder them in here and it's just very uh labor intensive and then the chance of you making a mistake of you putting the wrong cable in the wrong pad right then it gets it gets to be really high and so if you make a mistake then you when you go and try this right here then you fry the whole thing <laughs> and so High likelihood of mistakes being made, uh, labor intensive, and it's very expensive because we live in California. Labor here is really expensive, right? As opposed to like in China where they use robots or they use like just cheap labor. And so in order to do that, we have to figure out a different way to do this. And so for that, I have version two or version 1.2, the next iteration. And what we're doing here is now we're using another technology that's called Flex PCBs. This is the same printer board, but instead of being in a hard uh, FR4, which is like just a uh, carbon, it's a, what is it? Fiberglass board. Now it's in a piece of plastic. And so you can run the same layers of copper in here, but on a flexi board like this. And by doing that, now we, we eliminate the chance of making mistakes and putting the wrong wire in the wrong place because now they're all laid out in here sequentially and all you have to do is solder a little connector here solder a little connector here and then solder this to this little connector here and then you repeat that process in the back and now when you put the bmss in there you just connect them and everything's connected and everything's right because there's i mean it's very very hard to make a mistake here because it's all that work in there so we had to you know design this board and then order it and i'm still trying and working out the kinks here to get the dimensions correctly and all this other stuff but this is what it takes to be able to build this uh in a way that it doesn't cost a lot and that it's easy to build right so the easier i can make for my staff to build this then the cheaper it's going to be uh, this might take an hour to build this, right, from beginning to end. This might just take 10 minutes because now it's a lot easier like to do the thing. Now, uh, uh, these wires already come included with this product. I have to buy a separate these, and these probably are going to cost like, I don't know, $5 or something. So it's going to be more expensive to do it this way. But if you take into account the labor, the extra labor that it will take to build this as opposed to this, then I actually come out uh, lower. And so this is the cheaper way to doing it and is the faster way to doing it, more efficient way to do it. And so that will allow us to have instead of like a $150, you know, custom board uh, BMS for this battery, maybe, you know, it's like $50, you know, custom BMS system, right? And so those are the things that you have to do when you're designing and when you have to repurpose some of these batteries, right? And this is just this battery. Then we have that battery over there. And then we have that battery over there. And then we have that battery over there and that one over there. And so, you know, it's like, that's I'm doing this times a uh, hundred. 
And so this is what I do all day here. And then I make videos sometimes. Uh, I used to do less of this and do more on the video work. And so my videos, if you look back in my catalog, they tend to be a little bit better because I spent more time back then doing that or that kind of work, right? But now I'm spending a lot of my time doing this. And so my videos are suffering, but I'm still providing, uh, I think a service to a community, a DIY community that is uh, trying to repurpose and reuse. You know, this is a, if you have to buy all the cells and make all the stuff, you know, you're talking about a $600, $800 battery here where, you know, by repurposing this, you can get it for half that price, you know, $300 for this. This is like very, very good, high quality batteries. Very, very compact. There's like two kilowatt hours. Is it two kilowatt hours? Yeah, it's like two, two something kilowatt hours of battery in there at 36 volts. Uh, very compact, very light. And so you, this, is, this is the best battery that you can currently get. I mean, as good as like Tesla. These are the, almost the same cells that are on my 2023 Rivian, right? Like the 2170s, like the cutting edge cars that are coming out in 2024. They still have those slim sales. So this is what we're talking about, like very, very high quality batteries systems that if we repurpose them, then you get a lot of value for, you know, for, for, for less money. And so that's, that's what we're doing here. All right, so that's just a little update of what we do here, a little behind the scenes of that one project and maybe like all the other projects. Uh, this is part of the reason why you don't see me online as much because I'm busy engineering more than making videos and doing, you know, like, I wanna thank you for all your support. I know that there's a lot of people that have been following me for years now since I started converting electric cars, right? Using batteries, figuring out how to use batteries there. Uh, and so, yeah, I wanna thank you if you're, if you're one of those. Thank you for sticking with me all, all these years and buying batteries and building battery systems for your use and stuff like that, right? It's like, yeah, it's been a journey. Uh, but we're still here and, you know, we're still, still going to be here for another, for the foreseeable future, right? So thank you for that. We'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.